Welcome to this demonstration of SnapLogic, the Intelligent Integration Platform. In this session, we'll be working with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. This is just one of the many use cases that SnapLogic offers its customers around the world. We have a lot of opportunities, a lot of capabilities, and not much time, so let's jump right in. All right, so SnapLogic is an integration platform as a service. So we present the user with a graphical user environment, a designer for creating your integrations as visual workflows of connecting to, uh, uh, transforming, and delivering data from source to target, or in this case, creating schemas and populating them with data in Data Warehouse Cloud. We have a manager for creating all of those assets for users and groups and projects and accounts for dev, test, and prod, a dashboard for monitoring the environments, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the drag and drop environment. First, we're going to create a table in uh, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud using the SAP HANA Snap uh, Execute. And so this will allow us to paste in any uh, a Data Warehouse Cloud SQL and have it executed for within the SnapLogic environment. So for me to be able to connect to Data Warehouse Cloud, obviously I'm going to need to have a, an account. So now I have a valid account and I just happen to have a, uh, a DDL statement in my buffer. So you'll see here that it is a create column table statement and as soon as I pasted it in, SnapLogic validated the syntax and said, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So this is a property sheet and all snaps have them. This allows the user to define the parameters necessary for the, the snap to do its thing, to connect, to transform, whatever. I'm going to validate and execute. So when I save this snap, what's going to happen is SnapLogic is not only going to validate that I have met the minimum criteria for the successful execution of the snap, but it's also going to submit it uh, uh, to uh, SAP DWC and create that table. So if we go into the Data Warehouse Cloud, you'll notice that there's only one table in here so far. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to refresh. And if the demo gods are in my favor, there's my uh, business partner's table. Okay, now I've created a table, but I haven't put in any data. So let's see. So the next step, obviously, is to create uh, a data and put it into that table. So in this case here, I'm reading a simple CSV file. And of course, SnapLogic has the ability to read just about any kind of file system or pull data in from other things other than file systems to put them into the Data Warehouse Cloud. So in this case, because I'm reading a file system, I have to convert it from a binary format to a document format, where now I'm going to map it to the appropriate fields necessary to be able to insert it into the table that I have defined. So it took me a couple of minutes to build this, but this is a short demo. So all I'm going to do is just run it for you. And it'll take a few minutes minutes for it to, or a few seconds, I should say, for it to execute. And when it's done, I should have 40 rows of data in the database. And now if I go in and do a refresh, There are my 40 rows of data. Excellent. Okay, so for a quick, you know, creating a single table, populating with data, you know, using the execute snap and, and creating a quick file to drop it into uh, uh, the database, that's easy. But what happens if I want to do dozens or hundreds of tables? In this case here, I have a SQL uh, uh, spreadsheet that contains hundreds of um, select or uh, create statements, comment statements, and you'll see here that what I'm doing in this pipeline is I'm reading a file and then I am changing the schema name and I'm creating table and adding comments, creating table, adding comments. And if there's any errors, I'm going to write them out here. Otherwise, this will uh, uh, continue its execution until all of the uh, SQL statements have been executed. Now, I would still have to go back in and manually populate the data uh, for each one of those. Wouldn't it be nice if I could select a set of tables from some database, Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, DB2, whatever, read that uh, uh, data and the schema and automatically create those tables by the dozens, by the hundreds in Data Warehouse Cloud? Well, of course, you can do that easily in SnapLogic. Again, quickly and easily. Here I'm using the Oracle list table snap, and I'm going out and I'm connecting to a schema called demo. 
And because I want to do a, a demo and I don't want to get all 485 tables, I just want those tables that contain the word accounts in it. And this is where we showcase the fact that in SnapLogic you don't write code. You define a JavaScript expression uh, uh, to validate, filter, uh, transform your data. So all of those things that you would do normally writing boatloads of code and other more primitive technologies using SnapLogic, you write a simple JavaScript expression that says, I want only the tables that contain the word account. Now I'm going to call a, another pipeline which is actually going to do the work. So I'm going to pass it some information, some of it static values such as demo, some of it as parameters that will dynamically change for every table that I read, some expressions here that I'm going to uh, uh, preface all of the tables with from Oracle, and then finally the, the, the schema that I'm going to put it into the data warehouse cloud. So this is the pipeline is where the magic happens. So what we're doing is we're connecting to Oracle, passing it the schema name and the table name. And this snap has two outputs. The first one that you see up at the top here is the data. The second one is the data definition. So let's take a look at this. So we're going to go in and we're going to look at this as JSON and expand it out. And so what SnapLogic has done is it has queried uh, uh, the system catalog of Oracle or any other system uh, 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 relational database and said, tell me the, the data structure, the table structure, so I can replicate it in another database. And that's what we're doing. So here is the table definition. Here is the data. And here's how it's created in uh, the Data Warehouse Cloud schema that I have uh, uh, populated. So let's go in, and I ran this already, so let's go into the Data Warehouse Cloud, change our spaces to the Replicate Demo, and you'll see here, these are all of the tables. Again, they all contain the word accounts, and they've all been populated with data with these two snaps. Piece of cake. All right. Finally, wouldn't it be nice if you could capture data as it occurs to update Data Warehouse Cloud so it has absolute freshest amount of information? Here it is. So we have a uh, SnapLogic subscriber snap, which is going to be triggered on an event in Salesforce when the opportunity changes. All right, we're going to capture that information, and we're going to insert that into the Data Warehouse Cloud. So this information happens on a, uh, a push basis. So anytime something happens in Salesforce, that information will automatically be updated in SnapLogic. Or I'm sorry, in uh, Data Warehouse Cloud by SnapLogic. For more information, please visit snaplogic.com. Uh, Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Have a great day.